Welcome to the Nuclear Power Institute's The Path of Most Persistent podcast. The podcast highlighting individual stories of persistence, community outreach, and inspiration to support the continuing and emerging nuclear science and technology needs across the state of Texas. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy today's podcast. So hello, today we are thrilled to have a special guest with us on our podcast, The Path of Most Persistence. Today we have Suzanne Jaworowski. She is with the U.S. Department of Energy in the Office of Nuclear Energy. She is a, a senior advisor, and we are thrilled to have someone of her caliber here with us to share her experiences, her thoughts, and her motivation for persistence. So please, Susie, how are you doing today? Hi, Valerie, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm thrilled to be uh, working with Texas A&M's Nuclear Power Institute. I have great respect and admiration for the institution and this organization. So I'm really honored to be here and, and be part of this program. Thank you for asking me. Excellent. Listen, in preparing for your interview today, we all took a look at your, your bio. And I have to tell you, uh, I'm a great fan, a huge fan. And it is so impressive to see uh, all your accomplishments, not only what you've done in the past, but what you're doing now. And just to kick things off, can you tell our audience a little bit about what you do? I know you're in the Department of, of Nuclear Energy, but can you talk about what you're doing, maybe some projects uh, that you're working on, and maybe what the future looks like for us? Sure, happy to do that. Uh, yes, I will give you a little bit of the background as I give an introduction to what I'm working on today, and that is I had applied to work for the administration in 20, late 2016 and was asked to come and be on the landing team at the U.S. Department of Energy for the Trump administration in January of 2017. So I was there as the president took his oath of office. There was about 10 of us who went into the Department of Energy, took our oath of office, and then started to work there on behalf of the new administration. It was a very exciting time and a time where I really learned so much about what happens at the U.S. Department of Energy. My background had been in uh, government affairs, communications, and I had a lot of clients that were in the energy sector from all different areas. Um, most recently, prior to that, I had been working in the fossil fuels industry, and I also had great admiration for, the, uh, for nuclear and what nuclear brings to the energy landscape. I always admired the large-scale, big power source that can be done on demand and with no carbon emissions. And so I always had admired that, and when I got to the Department of Energy, I asked to work in the Office of Nuclear Energy. And I, I was quickly brought in the office. Everybody there was so impressive, bright and welcoming and just a wonderful group of smart, smart people doing the job of providing nuclear uh, research development and deployment support on behalf of the U.S. grid. And so I asked to work there. My role is in communications and policy. And so my job is really to watch over and make sure that the president's vision is implemented um, on behalf of the area of nuclear. And then also that we can communicate all the great things that are happening in the nuclear industry in the United States right now. So those are the two main areas I work in. Some of the programs that have been put into place that we're standing up right now and that have taken off really quickly uh, in the last couple of years um, that are worth mentioning is the National Reactor Innovation Center. We refer to it as NRIC, N-R-I-C, the National Reactor Innovation Center. It's at the Idaho National Lab. And the job there is really to help deployment and uh, demonstration of nuclear, new nuclear technologies in 
hopes of these technologies coming to the commercial market someday. And so it's very fascinating to see all the work that's happening there. And then there's another brand new program called the Advanced Reactor Deployment Program. And that is a program that provides funding for that ultimate commercialization and deployment of new reactor advanced technology, all under the goal, the president's goal, of helping the United States to become a leader once again in nuclear energy technology in the globe. That is so impressive. I'm exhausted just hearing you <laughs> and all your <laughs> initiatives because not only uh, because of the, the, the quantity, but the quality. Um, again, we here at Texas A&M, the Nuclear Power Institute, are great fans of all that you're doing. So we know that, that not only the quantity is there, but the quality. Uh, so thank you for your, your work and your service. Thank you. You. Uh, we look forward to the graduates of Texas A&M's nuclear engineering program and all the wonderful programs that are across the country to help fulfill that mission. I mean, the, the president stated he wants to see the U.S. civil nuclear industry be revived, revitalized, and expanded. And so our office is putting that infrastructure into place, and we're looking to our outstanding U.S. universities to provide the human resources to fill those jobs and to see that vision through. So we, we look forward and appreciate all that you're doing. Well, I will tell you, um, in, in working uh, with you when our paths have crossed in the, in the past, and um, just having some understanding of all of your work, not only here uh, within our wonderful United States, but internationally too. I know that there is such a need for our leadership and our, the appreciation when we share. So I know you have a very active role internationally too. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe it is the Infrastructure Framework for Nuclear Energy Corporation, is sometimes referred to as FNEC. Can you talk a little bit about that, your work, and maybe some of the projects there? Thank you, yes. Uh, IFNEC is a really exciting organization because it is a global 65 country government to government organization that brings together countries from all over the world, my counterparts who work in nuclear energy, and we come together to share information and to cooperate with one another on the peaceful uses of nuclear technology. There are three different main working groups that fall under IFNEC. There's a fuels group, there is um, an infrastructure group, and then there's also a group that pairs together supplier countries with newcomer countries, help them understand the format and the structure that needs to be put into place to develop new nuclear projects. And so we try to provide information from all different countries and share that information. For example, in June, we were planning to have a meeting in Jordan at the Dead Sea, and uh, it was all on SMRs and the deployment of small modular technologies around the world, and all these different countries could come together and share their plans and share ideas and cooperate and um, talk about what they're doing in that area. Well, of course, with the COVID pandemic, we could not get together in person. So IFNEC did a month of SMRs. We had SMR month in June, and we did a series of webinars, one hour webinars on all different topics. Those topics included sharing information about the regulatory infrastructure that needs to happen in order to put into place a small modular reactor or micro reactor program. Uh, we talked about the financing and how to get financing for those kinds of projects and what kinds of financing can support those kinds of projects and what to expect in being able to obtain financing from different parts of the world. We had a vendor roundtable where different SMR design companies came to the table and talked about where they are in terms of deploying their advanced reactor SMR designs and when those designs would be ready for commercialization. And it was just such an interesting way to hear about what's happening all around the world on the SMR front specifically. We also are very committed to sharing information about the innovations that 
are happening with existing reactor fleet in terms of the advanced fuels, advanced manufacturing technologies, and the things that are really helping to provide extended lifetimes for the existing fleet and keep them running efficiently and effectively so that they can have a long lifetime and providing carbon-free energy. So um, that's one of many things that we're doing in IFNEC, and, and I would invite your students to start following IFNEC, following IFNEC IFNEC on Twitter. Also visit our website, ifnec.org, and see all the things that are happening because students are more than welcome to participate in our webinars, um, sit and look at our membership. If you'd like to reach out for a mentor or networking conversation, we're always open to that. So if, it's, if you're interested in global projects in nuclear and you think that that might be part of your future track, I would invite you to visit ifnec, ifnec.org, and reach out. Take a look at our leadership. If there's anybody there who you'd like to connect with, send an email, um, follow us on Twitter, and connect with the organization, and we'll be happy to provide you with someone to have a networking conversation. That is Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for all of that. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you're doing so many things and uh, accomplishing great things, not only for um, uh, for the, the whole sector, the whole nuclear energy sector, but for the U.S. So again, thank you so much for your work and your service. But now I want to pivot just a little bit because underlying all of your efforts, uh, your amazing contribution, there has to, ha you have to have uh, a certain amount of strength and not only that strength to um, to maintain the quality and the quantity of work that you're doing but that level of persistence which brings us to our topic today and I have to say that I think in a prior conversation or communication we had you mentioned that persistence was one of your favorite words so can you talk a little bit about why persistence is one of your favorite words and how it is that you persist in your daily life? Thank you so much. Uh, it's a great topic. And, and before I address that question, uh, Dr. Sigavoya, I want to just also acknowledge, uh, you know, you talk about all the accomplishments at the Department of Energy's Office of Nuclear Energy. And I just want to acknowledge the fantastic team of people that are there. I'm lucky to be one of many that are working on all of these areas. And I'm happy to be um, often the voice that's sharing what's going on there. But we have amazing leadership. We had great leadership from the former governor, Rick Perry, Secretary of Energy, and now our new Secretary of Energy, Dan Burrett, who is a fantastic leader as well. And um, they are really paving the way for us to do great things in the office. So I have to give uh, some acknowledgement to all those folks. So on the topic of perseverance, yes, the word perseverance is literally, it is my favorite word. It is my favorite word because I feel like that, um, that emotion, that acknowledgement, that understanding of the idea of persevering has really carried me through a lot in life. Um, I, I, I won't go into a whole lot of personal detail in my background, but um, throughout my career and throughout my personal life, uh, there are a lot of things that you make plans of what you'd like to do, and then life changes, and it's very important to be nimble and flexible. Um, in my personal life, I had four children in five years, and we were thrilled because we really wanted a big family, um, and it happened quickly. And I will tell you, attitude is everything, and having a positive attitude about having four little kids at one time, it's been the greatest blessing in my life. And now they're all young adults, and they make me proud every single day. And just being able to face every challenge with an optimistic attitude served me so much. And having that feeling of perseverance that no matter what each day brought, um, I was not going to let it beat me or let any challenges get in my way. And so recognizing that there are challenges, um, 
in my career and early in my career for a long time i worked at ad agencies and that was during the tech bubble and it burst and ups and downs and we would win business and it was so exciting and then we would lose clients because through no fault of our own they'd come and go and being nimble and flexible and being able to i hope always um be as self-aware and evaluate the situation for what it is with as little emotion involved in that evaluation, I think is a big part of being able to persevere. And so sometimes things happen in our careers and our personal lives that can be a real challenge, an unexpected challenge, things change. And being able to identify those changes, identifying the opportunities and the obstacles, and being realistic about them and knowing that no matter what happens that you will persevere um, personally my faith in god serves me every single day and being able to ask for his guidance and support whatever challenges come my way um, and sometimes the best thing to do is nothing at all and just sit back and let things happen and be aware of the situation around you and just always continue to do your best given the environment that you're in and and you'll know when you have to fight and push back a little bit and be strong on things and you'll know when you have to sit back and let things happen and then the time is right to um stand up and and raise your hand on things so yes perseverance is a personal goal that i have every day and um having a positive outlook no matter what challenges come along um will continue to serve and and so if any of the students are listening you know it's a, it's a difficult time right now in a lot of areas you're, you're lucky if you get a a degree from one of the wonderful universities in the united states but it doesn't guarantee anyone a job and then when you do get in the job market that is a challenging time going from being a high school or a college undergrad to then being a professional in the workforce or trying to get a job that can be a very um, disappointing, uh, frustrating time. And uh, I, I would just say that that power of perseverance is so important during that time of transition of going from a student to a professional. So just encouraging everybody, especially those who have a degree related to or in nuclear engineering, your future is bright. So when the bumps come, roll with it and keep going because you will have a good career. That is so powerful. Thank you. Just when uh, I think we think we can't admire you more, you just <laughs> you just raise those levels of admiration. So thank you. That is so powerful. And and speaking, since you did uh, mention younger students, and we have such a large audience of younger students because so many of our programs are targeted towards secondary students, I want to pivot a bit. So here we go. Here's the question. Can you tell us, Susie, who you were when you were 16 years old? Who oh, good. <laughs> uh, definitely um, not super organized, I'll admit. Not super organized. Very ambitious. Uh, uh, not super skilled. You know, I mean, uh, 16 years old, I knew I wanted to make a positive contribution in life. I very much enjoyed spending time with my friends and I, uh, I wanted to make good in life for sure, but I really enjoyed um, being with my girlfriends. I enjoyed sports. I enjoyed, um, I was a cheerleader, but I also played softball and I did not have great grades. I hate to admit, but I always, um, I think even back when I was 16, I, I had a, a feeling of calm confidence uh, that everything will work out. And uh, so that, that, I guess at age 16 was my interpretation of perseverance at that time. But a big part of that, I think, was I had two wonderful parents who were always there for me, even when I made mistakes or made bad decisions. And, um, I had a best friend who's still my best friend today, who I met the first day of kindergarten. And so having that family support that was there for me no matter what, and having a best friend who I could confide in, I think gave me a lot of um, 
comfort in life that, you know, no matter what, I had the, that group of people around me who would always be there. And even today, my parents are deceased, but I still feel that they're there with me. And uh, the foundation that they gave me is, um, is very much alive. And uh, so even though they're not physically here with me, I still feel that support that they gave me. And uh, I think that went a long way to who I was when I was 16 and helping me to then hopefully evolve over the years. That is tremendous. And of all the things, the powerful comments that you've made already in this interview, thank you so much for sharing that because I think that uh, students and, and people such as myself who was not you know, a top student in high school uh, found motivation later in life. I think that that's so important because sometimes, not, not sometimes, I think most of the time, sadly, so many of our students don't realize their gifts, their beauties, their talents uh, in high school because there are so many other distractions and obstacles. And when they hear uh, experiences from someone of your caliber that felt quite ordinary, you know, quote unquote, um, at the time in high school and uh, have chosen paths and um, took on challenges and did all the things they needed to do to get um, at the, the level that you are is such an inspiration. So thank you for uh, responding to that unexpected question that I just threw out at you. But uh, that was so extremely powerful. And I think of all uh, your comments today, that one is going to really touch uh, many hearts and plant many seeds of encouragement. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And, and you made the comment of all their skills and benefits and, and uh, gifts that they have. And they all do have skills and benefits and gifts. And sometimes it takes a while to find what those are. But um, each and every person listening to this does have gifts and they will come through. You just need to let them, let them blossom. And uh, yeah, they and you know we all do make mistakes and so when you do make a mistake it, it's something that we learn from and move on we don't hang on to it and let it weigh us down but we remember those mistakes in the light of not going to let that happen again but um it doesn't define who you are so um yeah I, i'm i'm cheering for the students that are listening for the to this and that are at texas a&m and at all the universities around the united states and, and all the high schools also um it the United States is, is a great place to live. And there are so many um, resources and opportunities available for each and every person um, of every walk of life. And we're so lucky to have such a diverse population in this country because diversity brings so much creativity to any problem and solution that comes to the table. So I, I just wanna celebrate the diversity that we have in our country. Um, acknowledge that it is a huge asset for us and that each and every person has something to give in pursuit of making our country the best it can be and each and every person has great opportunities because we live here in the United States. Thank you so much for for all of your comments today. Um, I had a question kind of going back to what you said about you know your parents having such a huge role uh, on you and your your thoughts on perseverance uh, in high school, uh, and especially for you know those students that are are going through high school, and maybe uh, graduating with their undergraduate degree and trying to join the workforce, or uh, find a professional degree, or even the professionals now looking to maybe pursue an even higher level of professional um, career. Uh, how important were those types of mentors to you on getting through some of those times? Thank you. That's a great question. Um, those kinds of mentors were really important to me because I look to them as examples of what I hope my life will be like. And so, uh, and it doesn't have to be um, your parents. For me, my parents were probably the biggest mentors and the biggest examples, but also um, I have an older brother who's always been someone I admire very much and who's also had a spirit of perseverance and, and I looked up to him and, and education is really important, but uh, the connections that we make with people in life are 
critical. And, and I, as a young person, especially, and even as an adult, I was often very intimidated by someone's role or their title or what they do and thinking, oh, gee, that person's probably way too busy to talk to me. And I, I don't have any business talking to that person because you know, they're here and I'm here and, you know, and, and still those, those thoughts can cross your mind, even as a, an adult in the working world and professional. But I think, you know, it never hurts to ask someone for their insight. And most people are going to be flattered and humbled when you ask for their um, insight or you, you approach them and say, hey, I admire what you do in your job and I'd like to do something like that could I talk to you for 15 minutes? Could you spare 15 minutes to tell me about how you got to where you are today? And I think most people will respond to that and will make time on their calendar no matter how busy they are. And I would just encourage students to, um, when you meet somebody or see someone, I've had people reach out to me through LinkedIn who I've never met before and they ask if I have some time to talk, I'm happy to do that. And and I think most people would be, and anybody who's not, that's okay. You just move on and find somebody else. But um, another organization that I'm really active in is the um, part of the Clean Energy Ministerial's Gender Diversity Program. It is the uh, equal pay, equal opportunity, and encouraging women to get into the clean energy field. And so um, what we try to focus on are three areas. One is role models choosing people who can be ambassadors and advocates on behalf of clean energy and women in clean energy so that there are role models that other women can look up to and, and young men too can say, hey, that person's doing a job that I'd really like to do. Clean energy is important to our world and having it just for awareness, these role models. And then promoting scholarships so that if they're interested in that field of study, they can have scholarships available to help, especially in the STEM areas to learn about STEM jobs. And then internships. And that way, if we have awareness of good role models that people can look to and say, hey, that person's making a difference and I'd like to learn how they did it. And then scholarships, I can have the education to prepare me for the job. And then internships where they have the experience to really understand the job then we are really grooming the next generation of leaders for the clean energy fields. And so those are the three areas that we really focus on. And I think those are three areas for young people to be aware of, be looking for those role models who, and don't be intimidated to reach out to them. Um, and then look for the ways to get educated and get experience so that you can be the next generation's leader. Thank you. Those are, are really insightful words. Hopefully our, our students take those to heart and, and pursue Thank those you. mentors that help, will help them. Well, we're going to be winding down our interview soon, as painful as that is, because I could talk to you, we could talk to you forever, but I want to make sure that uh, any of our, my team members that are um, participating today have an opportunity to ask questions before we close out. So anyone um, else that is listening in, do you have a question that you'd like to pose before we wind down? Okay, then I'm going to continue on. And... You know, Susie, you've said so many wonderful things, and 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 I want to also thank you. Now, um, you've agreed to participate in our Clean Smarts Masterclass as an expert. Um, uh, that is so tremendously appreciated, uh, not only because of the quality, again, uh, level of expertise that you're going to bring uh, to that masterclass, but also for the time that you used. We've already started receiving some of your materials, and um, the quality is exceptional, and I know it's going to be very well received with all of the participants, students, and educators alike. So thank you for saying yes to that. Well, and with all of your accomplishments, you, at the beginning, you mentioned um, being a mother to four children. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I only have three. <laughs> so I know that one more adds quite a bit more to your life. And, and no doubt that has had um, great influence and impact on your life because it, it just has to. But just in your brief comments, um, it is easy to feel and to hear uh, your love for your family. So if ever we had the opportunity to meet your children, your family, 
what would you like for them if, if um, they had to just really encapsulate who you are or what you mean to them, what would you like for them to say about you or what would you hope they would say about you? Um, I hope that they would say that they know there's always unconditional love and that uh, their dad, my husband and I are their greatest cheerleaders and that we're always there for them no matter what. So I, I hope that, and, and I think they know that, but um, I hope that's what they would say. And, uh, you know, our, our family is evolving because our youngest has just gone to college. So we're entering the empty nest phase and that's different. And uh, our son and, and daughters have, have expressed that, um, you know, you did a good job, mom and dad. And that's what I would hope that they would say. No doubt that is what they would say and do say and have said. And, and I just wanted to capture your thoughts there because again, as a parent, a mother, a professional, all those layers, um, I just think that it's important uh, for people to hear those thoughts from us on that side of our life because our professional life is so public and is so out there. But I think it brings a level of enrichment when people can connect with your other passion, your personal side. So thank you for sharing that. And, and we know not only as um, we have so many educational programs that the support and love of parents is everything to what we do. And thank you for sharing that side of you because that again means so much to us and all of our listeners. Yeah, it's and certainly I perfect, but it's the best we can do each day and that's all we can do. Exactly. And, and again, being a parent myself, I know that there are days where we make mistakes uh, mm -hmm. more than we'd yep. want. But as my mother told me many, many years ago, all you can do is wake up every morning and be determined to do your very best. It may not be the best for that in an overall scheme of things, but at the time, that was the best that you could do. And mm -hmm. in the end, that allows you to sleep at night knowing you gave it what you, you had. So I, I appreciate and respect that perspective. Um, as we close today, I wanna to ask you one following closing question, but is there anything that we missed that you hope that we would have asked or uh, prompted from you that we did not cover? Uh, the only thing we didn't talk about is the breadth of jobs that are available in, in the nuclear industry. And, and just uh, leave you with, um, especially for the students in high school or perhaps teachers that come across this, there is a program that the U.S. Department of Energy is supporting along with the American Nuclear Society and the Discovery Education Network. Um, Discovery Education is phenomenal. They create such high production value content for the students in the United States. And so we have a program with Discovery and the American Nuclear Society called Navigating Nuclear. And you can access the resources. There's teacher's guides, there's virtual field trips, um, and there's curriculum at navigatingnuclear.com. And there's so much in terms of educational resources. And part of that demonstrates the various types of jobs that are available related to and in specifically nuclear engineering. And so I would just encourage the students to go and take a look at that. That's been a lot of fun to put together and taking a virtual field trip is amazing. So I invite them to, to take a look at that also. You know, thank you so much for bringing that up. And I, I'm just dismayed with myself that I neglected to bring that up because not only uh, being knowledgeable and aware of your good works there, you say a pleasure, but I know again, it had to take a lot of persistence to get that done. But I want you to know that our organization, NPI, has already linked all that information. We're sharing it actively with all of our, our, uh, our partners, educators, industry folks and of course community folks so i want you to know that again we are sharing your rich resources uh, locally throughout the state and even for our international friends that are asking for resources you guys are the number one stop so thank you for that because those are resources we have 
do and will continue to, to utilize. Um, but I want to do, you know, give another shout out to the state of Texas <laughs> and the fact that, of course, we're here. And, um, and I can say personally from where I live currently and, and grew up in a very small community of Palacios, Texas, the South Texas uh, project, the nuclear mm -hmm. operating company is just yeah. 12 miles from my home. And, um, and I will tell you not only my community, uh, our state of Texas is, is a very big uh, fan, obviously, of nuclear power because of its success, its efficiency and effectiveness, and the workforce that it brings about such good livelihoods. And uh, again, I want to thank you at that level as a community member, a person that has reaped the benefits of uh, all the energy, and just reassure you that your resources are being used today in these little communities and, of course, um, internationally as well. So thank you. Yeah, Thank you. That. South Texas Power Project is an amazing project. And uh, yes, the, the state's lucky to have them there and they have fine people working there. And, and, and thank you to all of the team that's working on this project and everybody at the Nuclear Power Institute at Texas A&M. We appreciate all the fine work that you're doing in helping turn out uh, some of the best students who will be the best leaders of our industry in the future. So thank you for all you're doing there. So with that being said, I just want to close out. If you have perhaps a favorite quote you'd like to share, or maybe not even a quote, if you just have a final message to share with the general audience, but really if you have something special to share with students, uh, we'd love to hear it. Well, um, I have on my uh, mouse pad right here, one of my favorite quotes and it is be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's from Joshua 1919. And I think that sums up a lot about perseverance and, and that is um, motivating to me personally. And so I share that with your audience as, as a quote that, that I like to be reminded of every day. Powerful. So be strong and courageous. Thank you. And with that being said, we, again, we could talk uh, on and on, but we'll close out because we know your time is valuable and we want to honor that. But thank you so much for all that you do, Susie, what you do for us, what you do for our country and all your good work. So thank you. Much appreciation. Thank you. Good luck, everybody. Thank you for listening to our podcast. The Nuclear Power Institute is a joint center with Texas A&M University and the Texas A&M Engineering Experiment Station and is a component of the Nuclear Engineering and Science Center. For more information about our center or about our guest speaker today, please visit our website at npi.tamu.edu and look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thank you.